In our lab, we are not interested in just making people live longer. What we're really interested in is to make people live healthier for longer. So currently, a big problem in our society is that people are living for significantly longer uh, amounts of time. However, uh, they are also living with disease for a long time. So there's a mismatch between the lifespan and the health span. Welcome to my office. I'm a pharmacist from background actually, and in my training I was very interested in nanomedicine and drug delivery, but that was actually the time where this reprogramming technique was being developed. We are working on an approach or a technique that is called cellular reprogramming, by which we can push cells backwards in the development process. So we can even make them younger, molecularly speaking, but also we can push them to go back to the cell cycle and divide, or we can even make them stem cells. I had the opportunity to join this project where we were trying to reprogram cells in vivo using these nanomedicines that we generate. And it yes, made me become also very interested in biology. So for my PhD, I was actually much more training into like the stem cell field. Part of my team is working, trying to understand the biology of regeneration and how we can improve it. And the other part of the team is actually trying to build and engineer tools, especially we work with nanomaterials and biomaterials, to try and induce regeneration. We are very interested in the heart because, unfortunately, heart disease is still the first killer worldwide and also because the heart has a very, very poor regenerative capacity. So we are trying to improve that. So it's a challenging problem because the muscle cells in the heart, they are called cardiomyocytes, are cells that do not divide after birth. We are born with a set number of these cells and in the event of a heart attack or any other cardiovascular accident, the cells that die cannot be replenished by our body. We're trying to use these reprogramming techniques that we have developed in the lab precisely to do that. My lab is using the cellular reprogramming technologies that we have been building through the years, and now we are not only applying them to disease models, but we're also applying them, yes, to aged organisms. So we are trying to confirm whether with this technique actually we can rejuvenate those cells at the molecular level, but also at the functional level. So whether they are more similar to cells from a younger organism and they also perform healthier. We are very far from going to the clinic and you know, I think that's always important to, to make very clear. So this is working in mice, but of course, first we have to demonstrate that this will also work in humans. But before we even do that, we also have to have a very clear understanding of the risks that these approaches could also entail. In a mouse model of heart failure, so we have managed to reprogram their cardiac cells. We have shown that they are molecularly younger, so they are more similar to those of younger mice, and now their hearts beat better. We are delivering pro-regenerative molecules to the heart. We are either using uh, mouse models that already have those genes incorporated in their genome, or we are using nanoparticles to deliver those to the heart. This field is pretty new. It's been around like 14 years. We were the first to demonstrate that we can reprogram cells in vivo. Previously, people had done this in culture. So in the tissue culture lab, they were able to deliver these reprogramming factors and have the cells reprogrammed in vitro. But around 10 years ago now, we were able to demonstrate that this can also happen in the living body. My lab, as I said, is a very diverse team at the moment. We have people who are more focusing on understanding regeneration, but we also have, we are engineers, so we have also a team that is engineering biomaterials and nanoparticles to deliver these therapies, because this approach is not something that we're going to be able to do with small drugs like ibuprofen or Tylenol that are available in pharmacies nowadays. We are delivering nucleic acids, similar to what goes in the COVID vaccine, for instance, and for that, we cannot give those drugs alone. They wouldn't just go anywhere in the body, they will be degraded. 
So we pack them in nanometer size sort of vesicles that can protect them from degradation, but also take them to the areas of the body where they have to do their job. We're also very interested in how the tissue microenvironment affect all these different processes. So reprogramming, but also gene delivery and others. And for that, we are creating sort of ex vivo tissues. So we use hydrogels. These are just polymers that get swollen with water and we can use them to mimic the extracellular matrix and the extracellular microenvironment and we culture cells on those gels so that we can have sort of mini tissues outside the body. In my lab we also work on tissue engineering. So in this case what we want to do is to create um, sort of tissue mimics and that can be the heart but also any other organ. So we're also doing a little bit of work in cancer, particularly in melanoma. So what we want to do is to culture these cells in an environment that is representative of what happens in our living bodies. And we use this for many different applications. We can use it to study the biology of this tissue, but also to test treatments without having to use animals, for instance. We and other research groups have also discovered that reprogramming the cells not only can make them in into stem cells, they can also be molecularly rejuvenated, so they are younger. So of course now there's a lot of interest in longevity research, so whether we can rejuvenate our organisms. In our lab we are not interested in just yes, making people live longer. What we're really interested in is to make people live healthier for longer. So currently a big problem in our society is people are living for significantly longer uh, amounts of time. However, uh, they are also living with disease for a long time. So there's a mismatch between the lifespan and the health span. So a huge interest in my lab is to actually bring those two together.